Welcome back to the show. We're talking about the outcome of the recent British elections. Still with us is Simon Marks, Chief Correspondent and President of Feature Story News. And joining us is Holger Stark. He is the Washington Bureau Chief for Der Spiegel magazine. Holger, let me start with you this time. What's the reaction in Europe to the outcome of the British election? Well, there's a huge disappointment um, all over the place. Um, everybody sees it as, as, as what it is. It's, it's uh, um, compromising the whole idea of the European uh, Union in a moment where it uh, just can't afford it. Remember, we have three pending crises um, ongoing. That's uh, the conflict in Ukraine. That's a Syria war with foreign fighters going back and forth and threatening European uh, security. And that's, of course, Greeks' uh, financial problems. So this European Union faces uh, major problems in the next uh, month and years ahead. And now we have a British part um, who's uh, obviously not, uh, not, not decided whether or not to stay in or out. So there's real concern in Europe that Britain may pull out? I think everybody sees it like that. Um, remember, David Cameron um, uh, played that card of um, anti-European ressentiments um, during the election campaign. And everybody expects now that there is another referendum coming up in uh, the next two years. He promised um, to, to give um, the uh, electorate the possibility to decide whether or not they want to stay or, or uh, opt out of the European Union. So that's a major obstacle um, for the next two years. And it will make every political process uh, very hard to achieve um, big things. Simon, how big was membership of the European Union for Britain an issue in this election? Well, it was definitely an issue. I mean, you had the UK Independence Party, that sort of brand new force on the British political stage, saying, we want out, we want nothing to do with the European Union. And four million people voted for it, never mind all the other millions of people who put David Cameron back into Downing Street. Uh, and already you can see on both sides of the English Channel people staking out their positions within hours of the votes being counted. David, David Cameron told reporters he'd been on the phone to European leaders telling them that he was coming along for a, a, a much better deal from Brussels. You had the European Commission President, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, uh, basically saying, well, the threat from the UK Independence Party didn't materialize. It amounted to absolutely nothing. So David Cameron clearly doesn't have to worry about them anymore. More. So this is going to be the dynamic of that relationship, at least, I think, I, I, I think you're absolutely right, at least for the next two years. And Holger, I mean, would Brussels then try to meet some of these British demands and compromise on certain issues, maybe things like immigration? Well, I think they need to. There is no other chance. But it will um, overlap all other necessary political uh, discussions. Um, there's the financial question already. So Cameron might, might ask for more money coming back from the European Union. And the immigration question that you raised is, is on the table, definitely. So uh, right now, people are free to travel within the European Union. They can choose where they want to work or, or where, where they want to live. And David Cameron clearly questions that, and that uh, puts a big question mark behind, behind the whole idea of the European Union. Remember, it came up after World War II as a, as a union of solidarity, because in Europe we caused two world wars with millions and millions of dead people. Um, solidarity was, was a word that brought this union together, and that solidarity is now in question. And look, I think there are, I think that's like exactly right. There are areas where compromise is possible. The financial issues, of course, co compromise is possible in that area. But this issue of freedom of movement, which is the idea around which the European community was built. My kids have British passports, but they're European Union passports. They can grow up and work anywhere throughout that union. They can travel anywhere throughout that union without having to worry uh, about borders. It's, it's, it's impossible to imagine really much of a compromise politically on that ideal. So the question for Cameron is going to be, how far does he push it? And how far is he forced to push it? And that, I think, is a real question about his own backbench members of parliament. How much uh, room are they going to give him to be quote unquote reasonable and what role does that UK independence party play going forward? And Simon, there's also a concern here in the United States over the possibility of Britain pulling out of the European Union. The New York Times uh, had a piece in which it said if Britain does pull out it would further distance Britain from a role in setting European policy that in turn would inevitably have an effect on Britain's ties to NATO and the United yes, States. Yes, but the United States has to be incredibly careful here. I mean we already saw within the last year or so uh, US officials from the Obama administration, Phil Gordon, former Under Secretary of State, traveling to Britain and voicing this idea that Britain should absolutely stay in lockstep with Brussels and it goes down very badly 
badly in Britain. They don't like this idea, many voters, of the Americans coming over and telling them what to do. So I think we all know and understand where the Obama administration and doubtless successive uh, US administrations uh, stand, but it, they've got to be very careful about how they voice that publicly. Right. Holger, the other issue we've been talking about is the possibility of Scotland becoming independent. How would Europe view that? Well, it's um, more the signal. It's not so much uh, the, uh, the actual consequences from a European perspective, which is, is um, threatening, but it's, it's the signal. It's a signal of secessionism. It's a signal of separa uh, separatism. Um, we have similar de debates uh, going on in, in, in Spain with the Catalonians, with the Basques. Um, so there are a lot of issues where smaller minorities within Europe just would like to drop out of their home country. So if Scotland um, proceeds in that matter, um, that sends a signal um, all over the place that uh, smaller parties like the National Front in France, the AFD in Germany, uh, will probably rise and succeed. And that is also very dangerous for the European Union. Simon, do you detect that there is not a great deal of enthusiasm for the idea of a European Union right now. We see, you know, a lot of nationalism in many countries around Europe. We see it in France, we see it in Greece. Spain is going to have an election at the end of the month. You know, parties that support nationalism are expected to do well there. Is the old political order changing? Look, I mean, I'm old enough to remember the referendum that took Britain into the European Union that was called by a Conservative Party Prime Minister, Edward, Edward Heath. Heath. Uh, this has been an ongoing debate in British society ever since that referendum took place in the 1970s. It is an unresolved issue. Europe must be heartily sick of successive British Prime Ministers who come in saying, we demand a better deal from Brussels. But so much of this skepticism and hostility is, is driven by um, ignorance of exactly what Europe stands for and also a failure on the part of political leaders and this goes to other countries as well really to articulate what is at stake if Britain walks away from this great European experiment I mean it is again it goes to the root discussion that the Labour Party has to have now about what kind of political party it wants to be expressing Europe as an idea through the aspirations of voters is what politicians have to do if they want to maintain British uh, British membership of the EU. Olga, what's, what are your thoughts on that, that, the fact that there are all these nationalist movements now around Europe which are saying, well, we don't think the European Union may be a great idea? Well, I think um, the idea of a European Union is great. Um, uh, solving problems in a peaceful way, um, that's, that's the greatest thing that Europe can, can achieve. Um, but definitely the agenda for the next two years at least has changed. Now, Angela Merkel, François Hollande, and all the other heads of states, they only need, not only need to dedicate their time to solve the crisis in Greece, the crisis in Ukraine, but they need to invest a lot of uh, time to convince uh, the population in UK of the great advantages and probably also the, the uh, population all over Europe to show that this idea is not just something on the paper, but is, is something live and, 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 and it's something you want to achieve, not only as, as a local force, but as, an, as a European idea as in, in total.